Hi, I'm Chris Kramer. I'm a faculty member here in the Department of Chemistry at the University of Minnesota. Earlier this year, the Chemistry Graduate Student Workshop Committee asked me to give a presentation on how to give a presentation. Uh, having created materials for that uh, lecture to the members of that committee, postdocs, graduate students in the department, I thought it might be useful to actually make this available more generally for people who might be interested and as a result I've created this online presentation. So the software I'm using in order to accomplish the presentation does let me embed a video of myself uh, into the screen throughout the, uh, throughout the slide presentation, but it's a little bit distracting to constantly be there and it takes up space on the screen. So after this initial welcome piece, I plan to dispense with the video. I'll still have a voiceover, but otherwise the only thing on the screen will be presentation materials. However, I did want to take this opportunity to look people in the digital eye and say welcome, and I hope you find this useful. So, this is the how to give a talk talk. And I, I think I want to start by saying, you know, what's at stake when you give a talk? Uh, perhaps it's the first time you've been invited to make a presentation outside your your home institution where you're training, and I'm going to tell you, and I'm maybe going to frighten you, that absolutely everything is at stake. And we're in the middle of uh, interviewing candidates as we speak for faculty positions in chemistry here at the University of Minnesota, and a job candidate lives or dies in that one hour. Actually, they get two, they give a research presentation, and they also uh, give a talk about their future research plans here. But in any case, it's that uh, time spent standing in front of an audience and trying to get scientific ideas across that really matter. And I'm also going to say, uh, and I hope I don't sound jaundiced or elitist or whatever, but three quarters of all talks I attend I consider to be a waste of my time because people have paid insufficient attention to the details uh, that they need to uh, put into an effective presentation. So here's my attempt to give back to the community and uh, think about all the things I've seen in the 25% of talks that aren't a waste of my time. And hopefully I can get across some things and you'll find some nuggets of wisdom in here that'll be useful for you as well. And uh, if this all sounds a bit scary, I'm going to just say to you, don't fear the risk. Embrace the opportunity for reward. Be the 25%. I'm picking a number other than that percentage, which uh, made the news more, more completely in the last year. All right, so before you start, what are the things that you should be thinking about? Well, uh, first and foremost, I will say to you, know your audience. Uh, that is, you know, sometimes I'm asked to give talks to groups of undergraduates. Sometimes I'm talking at a Gordon Research Conference. Perhaps I'm doing uh, some outreach in a K-12 school in the community. Obviously, those require different levels of talks, and you should tune your material to your audience. And there's nothing impolite about asking to know more about an audience when you receive an invitation to speak. And so I'll emphasize that. Ask if you're not sure. Particularly for a departmental lecture, uh, it's very useful to say, will this be a collection of, say, only the organic chemists in the department? Is it the entire department? Is it, uh, will undergraduates be attending as part of coursework, for example? Try to get a good feel for what levels you should be speaking to know your time limit. There is nothing more rude, in my personal opinion, than going over the amount of time that you have allotted for your presentation. It's disrespectful to the audience. It is uh, disrespectful to yourself because people are not going to be inspired to ask you questions because many of them are fidgeting and need to get on to their next appointment. And once again, ask if unsure. Uh, most people assume there's sort of this canonical hour talk, but you may find out from uh, your host that actually they would love it if you'd give a 45 minute talk and devote 15 minutes to questions and those question periods are often the most fun. So again, uh, ask if you're unsure. What about technology? Nowadays of course most things are done in some digital way and you plug in your favorite presentation software but again it can't hurt to know ahead of time uh, what you'll be facing and what kind of room you may be in so ask if unsure and as you see you get it. You find out the details ahead of time. I'm also going to tell you, you know, think about what impression are you trying to make. Obviously, if it's a job talk, you are trying to illustrate your professionalism. You are trying to inspire people to uh, make you a job offer, for example. But I would go beyond that and say that, you know, a presentation, a seminar, however we want to call it, is really a performance. And so, uh, just like any performance, there is a certain aspect, I, I hesitate to call it entertainment, that makes it sound as though we're somehow diminishing the sterling quality of science. But there is an entertainment or a performance characteristic to it, 
And you should think about that. You should think about your costume, that is, what are you wearing? And so generally, uh, my advice is you want to wear something that illustrates a level of professionalism, but also thinks about the audience. So I'll come back to that. So when I give talks to, say, K through 12 students, if that happens, I don't want to be so intimidating that they're afraid to uh, engage with me during the course of the talk or afterwards. So while I'll attempt to look professional at some level that shows respect for my audience and respect for the science I'm talking about, I may not go with the you know most sartorial outfit I have at my command because I don't want to seem so far outside their experience of what they see dressing around them that they're intimidated. Uh, and that, actually goes for undergrads too. They're, they can be intimidated as well, even if they're a bit older. Uh, I'll also say, you know, interact with your audience as you are giving your presentation. People who turn their back to an audience and talk to the screen for 60 minutes are in my 75% category. Uh, it's just, it's not interesting. It's easy to lose your audience. They are all going to pull out their smartphones and begin surfing uh, while you are, you've got your back to them. It's not even rude to you. They don't, you don't even know. Uh, try to make eye contact. Try to move around the room. Try to modulate your voice in such a way that you emphasize important things uh, and attract attention and be interesting, essentially. And then finally, of course, uh, it's, it's good to practice a presentation. Uh, if you've never given it before, it's particularly good to practice. After you've done tens, hundreds, thousands, of course, you often do these things a little bit colder but it's good to think about what you're going to say on individual slides. I, I've also added here, it helps until it hurts. You can over-practice. Uh, often we'll get a job candidate who comes in and gives an extremely wooden presentation where it's clear that almost the entire talk is memorized at this point. It's been practiced so many times. And that also sort of detracts from the spontaneity, the interest, the spark that's going to keep you engaged. So what about a title slide? Uh, that's where everybody starts typically, and you've got it uh, up on the screen, and it should be eye-catching and engaging. Uh, and so I, I've got some advice here, and that is I think your title should not be too long or too technical. Remember, your, your talk will often be advertised by some email or some flyers that will include the title, and you will want to uh, attract the largest audience you can. And you do that by having something that's short and not off-putting in acronyms or uh, extremely high levels of science. And I would say the same if you're asked for an abstract. Uh, this is in the know your audience category, but you want to uh, provide information that's going to be engaging, that's going to be welcoming, and you're going to explain something. People will want to go because they're going to learn something. If it just looks like gobbledygook to them, they're going to think that's what they're going to hear, and uh, they may not attend, and that's not what you want. I usually like to list the names of my coworkers on the title slide because it gives me an opportunity to thank them for their, converse, for their uh, contributions right up front. I usually will try to do that at the end as well, but every once in a while, time being what it is, uh, one may, something can happen. So why not thank the really key people who made contributions right at the start? And it doesn't hurt to thank anybody twice. And then uh, a time and a date. So you see this talk was originally given March 20th of 2012. And a few uh, eye-catchy things that perhaps say where you're coming from. So a loon is the state bird of Minnesota. We've got some nice fall colors. You see the chemistry department of the University of Minnesota there. And that, that animal is a gopher for those of you who don't know the mascot of the University of Minnesota. So uh, here I am giving away my secrets after 20 years and, and happy to do it. Uh, so I'll say a good talk is a storytelling performance. And so I told you in terms of uh, trying to engage an audience Imagine that you are indeed telling a story. For those who have children and have told uh, uh, stories to them as they've grown up, you know, seven-year-old, that's right about where you want to shoot for. You can certainly respect your audience as having an uh, intellectual capacity above a seven-year-old, but uh, they're going to listen to you when you pitch it in that kind of engaging way, So, that from a stylistic standpoint at least. I'll also say in general that less is more. And so one of the most common mistakes in uh, presented lectures, I would say, is an attempt to shove as so much as you possibly can into your allotted time limit, usually with the idea that, oh, I will impress my audience by showing them how much work I got done. And I really think that's counterproductive. What you want is an audience that goes away and says, I really learned something. I felt like this person who just gave a presentation expanded my knowledge base and did so by teaching me at a pace and at a level that it got through to me. And when you're trying to cram four stories in, in a 60-minute talk, 
Uh, you often will not, in fact, get things at a level of detail that people learn anything. They just kind of feel as though a train blew by them and they're disappointed that they wasted their hour. It is a very common mistake among students to assume that uh, since I, the presenter, have been thinking deeply about this subject for the last three to four years of my life, surely everyone else in the room is just as up on it as I am, and I will dive in at the highest level and assume an enormous background and experience that just isn't there. And so it's quite important in the early slides to set a context, explain why the science you're doing is interesting, uh, explain I'm going to go into this in a tiny bit more detail in a moment, but you know, bring people in at a pace that you would expect reasonable for an informed scientist, but not an expert in your area. And so I have her on the slide teach to Jethro, and I was thinking of uh, Jethro Clampett of the Beverly Hillbillies, if you remember that, if you're of a certain age, you might. But in any case, uh, something of a naïf, uh, very interested in various things, but if you could get a, a concept across to Jethro, well, you definitely will get it across to anybody. Uh, so again, I'm going to say never run long, never, I've got that in, in italics, it's disrespectful, it illustrates your inability to plan, so if somebody was thinking about making you a job offer and you've just shown you don't know the difference between 60 minutes and 75, uh, they may question your uh, competence. And if you do have to cut material, just cut it, even on the fly. I have never felt badly if a speaker has said, you know, I just don't want to go into this uh, remaining part, I don't think I have enough, so I'm going to wrap up here and I'm happy to... Uh, take questions at this stage. Certainly if you do practice you'll get a better feel for how long it's going to take you and the more talks you give the more you'll know what your time per slide is roughly and that'll help you plan talks.